Good morning and welcome to the Denny Mirrors Facebook Live with me, Emmeline Saunders. And this morning, I'm very excited to be joined by the historian, Bethany Hughes, who has been creating a new Channel 4 documentary about treasures of the world. So good morning, Bethany. How, how Hi. Nice you? Hi, how nice to speak to you. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. Brilliant. Thank you. Good, good, good. Please, it's sunny here in the UK. I know, at long last. Finally yeah. got our summer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. So we're going to be talking about your Channel 4 show uh, this morning, which is uh, Treasures of the World, um, which is all about you travelling around the world in the middle of a pandemic. So do you want to just talk to talk to the readers about what that was like? How, how What was that experience like? Well, it was it was kind of slightly mad of us in a way. We just thought, as everybody did, you know, the pandemic was so horrific and challenging in so many ways. And I'm sure like many people watching and listening, you know, we'd lost um, friends and loved ones and colleagues. And we just thought, what can we do? And um, we knew that people were sort of shut in these four, you know, between four walls and just wanted to get the stimulation of being somewhere else. And also, I think, trying to work out kind of why we do what we do as a species you know what what would it what life was all about basically so I said okay one thing we can do is when it's legal and safe let's try and slip out wherever we can across borders to look at new historical discoveries and archaeology just to sort of give people a bit of fresh air on their screens and also to, to kind of ask those questions about what it's what it's been like for over the last thousands of years so we decided to do this. I have got an amazing team who are, you know, my kind of closest friends. We really hugely trust and respect each other. And we sort of made a pact. We said, OK, so we're going to form this bubble, this crazy new family sort of filming COVID bubble. We waved goodbye to our real families and we just set off. So we were filming across nine weeks in 25 different destinations you know we crossed kind of I think 11 borders in that time but because we were so 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 careful and outdoors a lot of the time and we just became this little kind of packed tight crew incredibly over that whole time nobody tested positive once we had you know we were being PCR tested every three days um, so we feel unbelievably lucky I've got to say you know both that we could do it and also that we all got back safe and sound um and that we can kind of share share what we found with everybody in this lovely series that is remarkable no COVID tests and no positive COVID tests among any of you that's brilliant no none I mean absolutely not isn't that staggering and as I said I think we were so careful so we you know we were tested we became this little bubble we well, oh my, I mean, you know, we used so much hand, hand sanitizer. We were so, so careful with everybody. So I think, and as I said, because we were outdoors a lot, because a lot of this is like brand new archaeology or we're out in the middle of the sea or, you know, uh, sort of deep in caves that nobody else goes to or up on mountain tops with temples. So we were in the fresh air a lot of the time. So, you know, I know it was, it was, we, we as I said, we were very, very lucky and very, very grateful. Um, but we just thought, you know, what I know as a historian is through time, people have always travelled to trade or to have adventures, uh, you know, or to visit new lands. We're almost genetically programmed to do that, I think. So it's one of the reasons it's been so hard for everybody to be stuck at home. And also these poor, poor countries who depend on tourism. We talk just if we, as I said, if we can get out there, then, then we can kind of celebrate what's happening and hopefully everybody's going to book their holidays you know <laughs> following the destinations that we go to for next year that's that sounds amazing and I, I was going to ask you what is your what was your kind of weirdest experience while traveling the weirdest experience while traveling um oh my gosh I mean you know to be honest so many I think the fact that we were you know just just to be honest, being on the road during a pandemic was really interesting to see how the different mm. countries all responded. And a lot of them, so we were in Turkey, which is still on the red list, I think. People were amazing in Turkey. So many people mm. being masked. And every time you went into a, a shop, you had your temperature taken and your, you know, your double vaccination was checked. So they were, you know, they were really incredible. Um, I, the most bizarre experience, I think, is probably the fact that I don't know why I do this. So I, I get claustrophobia and I hate being in small, dark places. But of course, a lot of amazing archaeology is down in caves. Oh, yeah, you've got a picture of it now. I mean, oh, what are yeah. thinking of doing? doing <laughs> so 
I sort of spend my time lowering myself. Honestly, you can hear on the on the sound on my kind of I've got a microphone in my shirt. You can hear my heart beating. Um, I think it was a fact that I did. I definitely topped my cave and tunnel uh, quota in this series. So this coming up on Saturday, we go into these um, incredible caves in Gibraltar, where mm. British soldiers went in the 19th century for duels. And they've left their graffiti on the inside of the caves. Um, we go and visit, you can see their cave in Malta, where we went to in order to look at these amazing um, Greek and Roman shipwrecks that they have in Malta. Again, in Gibraltar, I go into these World War II tunnels. Um, and uh, in Malta, I went underground to see this beautiful sort of medieval Arabic water system. But it, like, it was like, you know, it's that tight. We're all getting kind of wedged in. So I think it's probably the fact it was kind of kill or cure. So I, I, I think I'm still claustrophobic, to be honest, but I definitely I definitely faced my fears in uh, filming this, this series. Yeah, you're a brave woman, brave woman than I. <laughs> Not sure I'd like a cave experience right now. Oh, I think we're getting a, bit, a little bit of feedback on you, Bethany, but we'll, we'll push through anyway. Um, hopefully our, our readers can still hear and see you all right. Uh, so what was your, your most favourite kind of architecture or delight or treasure that you saw? My favourite one, I mean, it's hard to say which is my favourite. It was that there were just so many. I felt so, so privileged. Um, in On the beautiful island of Delos in Greece, I got to experience this full moon festival like under the, in the summer solstice, under the super moon. So I was kind of living as the ancient Greeks and Romans did who went to visit the island. That was completely completely remarkable um and in istanbul i go down there are storing this amazing cistern system and i go right down kind of and tread on the on the tiles that were laid by the emperor of the roman the roman east justinian which is a once in a lifetime chance nobody's ever going to do that again because they're going to fill it back up with water so it kind of, and, and i'm there in istanbul where these people Beautiful coins come out of the earth and archaeologists are digging them so so you know lots of kind of magical magical experiences for me but I think just being out in the beauty of the landscape as well we've got a, a cameraman who I work with the whole time who is obsessed with sunrises and sunsets so we always get up at kind of 5 30 in the morning we're always you know still filming at 8 39 but just that just experiencing the sort of natural beauty of the world and the kind of magic of the Mediterranean and other places that was again that was a real treat and I think through Covid we've all learned to do that a bit more haven't we of just be still for a moment and kind of listen to the bird song and look at the sunsets and you know hear the wind in the trees and we did all of that when we were filming and again we've shared that in the film as well. That sounds absolutely amazing um, so obviously you, you are a historian you've been you've been working in uh, in in academia for many many years did you know uh, all of the sites you're going to be traveling to did you know already what the the kind of treasures were uh, what they were and what they were uh, used for and so on or did you learn new things as you were traveling yeah so i know i learned a lot so we, we basically i've been in contact with all these archaeologists around the world like, what are you finding what are you doing yeah, as soon as we're allowed out as soon as we're legal so i have this fantastic kind of wish list of places to to go to but even i discovered thing so you know i didn't know really about the details of the neanderthal history of gibraltar i didn't realize that there were huge neanderthal communities there and like really touching touching things that we were there with this little cave of, of being excavated where neanderthals are and one of the children has been taken by hyenas and so the bones are in the in the cave of shore and this hyena there i mean that's you know staggering and looking at neanderthal footprints on the ground as well so you know really really beautiful things like that so no i discovered a lot so i know i as i said i have i live in the past in my head the whole time anyway. i'm basically <laughs> sort of living in the, you know in the bronze age of the ancient world they just like can't wait for an opportunity to get back out there. but as i said people were so so generous there was a real sense of collaboration so we would we get incredible access to digs and stuff so, you know i wouldn't normally get but i think again through the pandemic people across the world really really did have that sense that we are all in it together and we've just the only way that we get through is by helping each other out so everybody was very very generous so no it's great so i you know i go to the ancient site of olympia and there's nobody nobody else there which never normally happens and in istanbul you know travel across to these 
beautiful islands, the Prince's Islands, that are famous for their for the history of their food. And as I said, in Gibraltar, uh, there's a lot of World War II, exciting stuff that I just love. And even I look at the report of Nelson's death, which happened just 30 miles or so away from Gibraltar, and his body was brought there. And we look at the you know the newspaper report, which talks about the death of Nelson. So all of the these kind of first-hand experiences. And I said, yeah, I, I was, you know, some of the places I knew about, you would expect, but even I was blown away by a lot of things that we discovered. It, it honestly sounds so amazing. I, I now want to a plane out of here. <laughs> and I do apologise for the feedback that's yeah. on the line. Um, but if, you, if you're watching and you have any questions for Bethany, please let us know in the comments below. Um, uh, Bethany, I wanted to know what's on your bucket list. You must have loads of other places you want to go and discover. Yes. Ah, where next? I mean, so, so many. I tell you where I really, really love. I want to go back to Turkey. I love Turkey. And I want to go far, far east and down through the Lycian coast. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to find somebody who might have a boat who's going to give me, you know, a lift to sail around. <laughs> that's how, again, that's how the Romans and Greeks, you know. So I've, obviously I've got to be on a boat to, to go it. So I think uh, Turkey. In the Lithuanian coast, I'd actually really love to go um, to, to uh, the Caucasus, to Azerbaijan and Georgia, those places, um, just mm -hmm. because they're, again, they're so exotic. I've been once, so rich in history, beautiful, beautiful sites. You get an incredibly warm welcome there. So I'm plotting and planning, and I think for season two, we're going to be heading back on those Silk Roads. So, so that's where I'm going to go. Where I'm going to go next. And maybe, maybe Spain. It's the one place that we don't visit in this in this particular series is Spain. But I know that's so popular for people. So I'd like to go and you know, have a look at the Roman, the Romans in Spain because they they were huge in Spain. They built amazing roads and uh, you know temples and up. So that would be a really lovely thing to explore. And if you could pick just one place for to recommend to everyone here, where would that be? A single place to go. But, you know, I can't do that. It's like choosing between your, your children. I just don't know <laughs> what place to go in the world that you, that you can do. Because everywhere is rich. Everywhere has amazing human stories. I mean, I think the one thing that you can do that we do in this series, so this Saturday we're going to Gibraltar. Next Saturday we do this incredible tour of the Mediterranean and the Mediterranean islands. And then on the last um, programme we go to Istanbul in Turkey. What I would so if there's any way you can possibly do it you know hitch a lift kind of find somebody who's going to take you in there are quite cheap ways of doing it as well get on a boat and travel because that is how you see the world as history has seen it because we used to travel by water a lot more than we did by road um and on a few of the journeys i took i was accompanied by dolphins for for every single mile of the journey um, and dolphins you know you see them more now Again, post COVID, they've been they've been around and traveling with the ships and boats more. So the one thing I would say is wherever you're going, even if it's for two hours or for half a day, try and get on the boat because that's a beautiful way to see the world. Okay, well, and now I definitely want to go. <laughs> I want to go and see some dolphins. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> so I've got one more question before we wrap up, and that is if you know, I'm not going to be travelling abroad this year, much as I would love to. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be staying home as well. Is there anywhere in the UK where you can find these hidden treasures? Where would you recommend going? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I love, I'm a huge fan of, of the UK. Um, my parents were actors, which meant that they, you know, they weren't working the whole time, shall we put it politely. So <laughs> all my childhood, we, we stayed in the UK. We used to go down to the Kent coast. You know, that was that was the kind of glamour of my world. I loved it. I mean, I absolutely loved it. We used to go to, to Kent. But there are, I mean, beautiful places. So uh, Cornwall and Devon and Dorset obviously have loads of really exciting history. If you want to travel up to the kind of borders just before you reach Scotland, there's, there's a lot of Roman material coming out there as well, because obviously that's where the kind of the edge of the Roman Empire was. So I, I would just say, you know, get in a car, find somewhere quiet, just stay there for a bit, you know, allow yourself a bit of time to have kind of peace in the, the in the landscape and pretty much wherever you go, we're as a country, we're a really rich layer cake of history. So every time you walk through a field or, you know, walk down a lane, you're walking in the footsteps, footsteps of the past. So if you can't, if you can't get abroad, just enjoy what we've got to offer here. Oh, lovely. And Treasures of the World is back on Saturday. 
from Channel 4. It's on Saturday. Yeah, every Saturday night, it's 8 p.m. Uh, Channel 4 for the next three weeks. Lovely. And the next episode is going to be looking at Gibraltar, as you mentioned. Yes, that's all right. So Gibraltar this Lovely. Saturday, then the Mediterranean, then Istanbul. Perfect. All right. Well, I'm sure everyone here is going to be tuning in to watch all those amazing travels. And I can't wait to watch them myself. Thank you so much, Bethany. And thank you all for your comments. And we will see you soon. Thank you.